Hi, I'm Erin with MeTime, and today we're going to make the oh-so-simple Molly zipper pouch. Now this is a free download from MeTime, and if you haven't got it already, go ahead and check below in the comments, and we have a link, and if you follow that, we will send you these files immediately. MeTime delivers complete machine embroidery experiences right to your doorstep. We include the fabric, the notions, the embellishments, everything you need so that you are ready to get started creating the moment you have a little me time. Now, if you're brand new to machine embroidery, this is a great project to start with. In fact, you can make the Molly zipper pouch in less than 30 minutes from beginning to end. And that's installing a zipper. We've got it fully lined with no seams showing. So even if you don't have an embroidery machine, you will love to just watch and see what they are capable of. When you download the files for the Molly zipper pouch, you're going to receive all of the file types to use with any kind of machine. You'll also get a PDF of instructions, and these are beautiful step-by-step, -step, full color instructions that will lead you through every single step of the process. You can either print off the instructions or you can use them on whatever device works for you. So I've got my files and they're loaded on my embroidery machine. And now we're gonna prep our materials. The Molly zipper pouch uses three fabrics. You have the fabric that's used around the zipper, that's right here. You have the accent fabric and the back. And then you have the lining fabric. You also need two pieces of project batting. This is Kimberbell project batting. You need a seven inch or longer zipper. This needs to be a nylon zipper. Don't use a metal zipper in your embroidery machine. We also need stabilizer. This is medium cutaway stabilizer. And again, I'm using Kimberbell stabilizer here. You're also going to need some kind of tape and I'm going to be using Kimberbell's paper tape. This is great because it doesn't leave a sticky residue on your needle or on your fabric, but really you must have tape to make this project. Otherwise the zipper doesn't really install quite right. You're also going to want a turning tool of some kind for turning the zipper pouch when we're done. And of course you need thread and regular scissors. You can see I have a wool felt ironing mat and a mini iron. It's really nice to have a mini iron because as you can see, I can iron right inside my hoop and not worry about popping my project out of my hoop. Okay, let me get my fabrics out of the way and we will get started. Okay, your instructions will tell you how to prep your fabrics. After you've cut your fabric according to the sizes indicated, you're going to need to press a couple of the pieces. This is the above and below zipper lining pieces. And both of them, you're going to need to turn down a half an inch and press it. Nice, crisp line. Okay, there's our below zipper piece. And we'll do the same thing with the above zipper piece. Okay, I have a five by seven hoop. You can use a larger size, but it won't work with a smaller size hoop. And again, we're going to use medium cutaway stabilizer. I'll just hoop that. You wanna make sure your hoop is nice and tight. Don't stretch or pull the stabilizer, just tighten the hoop as tight as you can. Okay, we're ready to put it in the machine and get started. Okay, we'll load our hoop in the embroidery machine, lock it down. Press the presser foot down, and we're ready to stitch the first step. Okay, we're done with the first step, so we'll remove the hoop from the machine, just so I can show you what we've got going on here. That first machine step stitched our placement line, and what it does is it shows us where to place our first piece of project batting. So we're going to lay it on the hoop, completely covering all of those stitch lines. Lay it and smooth it down, and then we put it back in the machine, and the machine will tack down that batting. So we just finished stitching the tack down line. If you're following along, we're on instruction step number six. We're going to trim this batting around that tack down line. I'm using a pair of duckbill scissors and you want to trim as close to that stitch line as you can. Remember to trim out the part in between the top and the bottom pieces. This is where your zipper is going to go. I can't wait for you to see us put this zipper in. It's kind of life changing. Okay, I've just stitched the zipper placement line and now we're ready to place the zipper. 
The instructions tell us to place it with the zipper above the hoop and place it right in the middle of that placement line. You wanna make sure that the bottom of the zipper is well below and the top is well above. We don't want any of that metal to get caught under the needle. And we are going to be generous with our paper tape. This is gonna make sure that the zipper goes in straight. And you especially wanna make sure you get the tape right at the bottom and the top where the batting meets the stabilizer. So I'll start with those and then I will apply tape liberally in the middle. Okay, we are ready to stitch the zipper. This is the easiest zipper you will ever place. Okay, we've removed the paper tape and now we're going to do something a little unorthodox. We're going to flip our hoop over and we're going to cut some of the stabilizer away from the project. We're going to cut the stabilizer inside that zipper placement line. I am using a seam ripper, but you can use a small pair of scissors if you'd like. There we go. Now turn the hoop back over and we're ready to place our first piece of fabric. We're going to place our above zipper fabric. The instructions tell us to place it face down, lining it right up with the edge of that zipper tape. I'm gonna use a little bit of paper tape here. And we'll return the hoop to the machine to tack that fabric down. We just finished stitching the above zipper fabric. We're going to remove the paper tape. Okay, now we're going to flip this piece of fabric over and we're going to press it. You can use your finger, but if you have a mini iron, you can iron right in the hoop. Press that piece down. Now we're on direction step number 15 and our machine step number six, we're going to tack down this above zipper fabric. We're ready to place our below zipper fabric, and this goes right side down, lined up with the left side of the zipper tape, making sure your fabric overhangs evenly on both sides of the batting. Use paper tape here. And it goes back into the machine. Okay, remove the paper tape again. And believe it or not, you have just installed a zipper. Wait till we flip this piece of fabric over and you will see how beautiful it looks. Okay, I've removed the paper tape and now we're going to flip this piece of fabric over. And look at that. You have just installed a zipper in your embroidery machine. It's straight, it's perfect, and I think you'll agree that was the easiest way to do that. Iron that down. And we'll put our hoop back in the machine to tack down this below zipper fabric. I'm going to use a little piece of paper tape in both of the bottom corners. We're going to remove the paper tape and the seam we just stitched is actually the placement line for our next piece of fabric. First, we're gonna trim this right next to that stitch line. Again, using my duckbill scissors. And now I get to place my accent fabric. So this is that little bottom piece of fabric along the bottom of your zipper pouch, okay? And again, you're gonna do this right side down, lining it up right along that stitch line, making sure it's even, okay? And it goes back into the machine. All right, we're going to flip this piece of fabric and again, we're going to iron it or finger press. This project is such a fun stash buster. You only need a few scraps of fabric and it's a fun way to use all of your favorite pieces. Okay, next we're gonna put it in the machine and it's gonna tack down the front of the zipper pouch all around and it's going to quilt it right in the machine. We've got a beautiful diamond quilting design that lines up perfectly with all of these seams.
Okay, we're going to keep the hoop in the machine for this next step. It's a separate step because now you're going to quilt it. And if you want to change your thread color, this is the time. So you can choose a contrasting thread color if you want it to really stand out, or you can choose a thread color that blends in. I'm gonna keep this light pink thread because I think it will really stand out on this purple fabric. So press or put down, and let's watch it stitch these quilting lines. Okay, look at that beautiful quilting. I love it. So now we're going to start putting the lining on the zipper pouch. And again, you have just got to trust the instructions. It feels kind of strange, some of the things it's asking you to do, but when it says use the lining, use the lining. So we're going to flip our hoop over again, and we're going to take one of those fabric pieces, the below fabric lining. This is one of the pieces that we ironed a half inch down on, and we are going to take it and place it right side up on the bottom half of the zipper pouch on the back. And you wanna line the edge of that fabric the, at the fold right below the zipper, okay? Again, making sure it's centered. Now we want to use paper tape liberally here because when we put the hoop back in the machine, this is going to be under the hoop and it will easily snag or pull and you won't know till you pull out of the hoop but then it's wonky. Now I'm gonna flip it back over and place it in the machine. Okay, we've just finished your machine step number 12. Now I should have mentioned that on that thread you wanna keep it the same thread color as the quilting because as you can see, it also stitched this beautiful top stitching line right along the zipper. Isn't that pretty? So we're gonna flip the hoop over again and we're gonna remove that tape. Now we're going to do the same thing with the above zipper lining piece. This is the other piece that we folded and pressed down a half an inch. Now we're going to line that up right side up above the zipper, centering it and lining it right above the teeth. Again, use paper tape on all sides. and flip the hoop over and goes back into the machine to tack that down. Okay, we're on direction step number 30. This is a very important step because it tells us to open the zipper about three quarters down. If you don't open the zipper up, you won't have a zipper pull in your zipper pouch. Now again, follow the instructions carefully. It tells you to place the back fabric right side down completely covering the zipper pouch outside line. So see this outer stitch line? You wanna make sure you're covering that up completely. Okay? And we're gonna tape that down. Now you're going to place your second piece of project batting right over the top of that. This batting is for the back of the zipper pouch. It seems backwards, I know, but it works out in the end. You're also going to want to use more paper tape here. And you really do need to use the two layers of paper tape. If you just put it on top of the batting and not on the fabric layer beneath, they can slide and move around. It is a lot of paper tape. It is your lifesaver on this project. Okay, now we're going to put it back into the machine and do the back tack down line. Okay, we have one machine step left and the zipper pouch stitching will be done. So leave your tape in place. We're going to flip the hoop over again and you're going to place your last piece of fabric. This is the lining back and you're going to place it right side down so the wrong side is facing up. And again, you're gonna cover that whole stitch line and tape it down well. OK, 
Okay, we'll flip the hoop over and place it in the machine for the final stitch. And here goes the final step. We finished the final machine step and you can't tell from the front, but if you flip it over, you can tell that we've left an opening here and that's for turning the zipper pouch. So let's flip it over and we can remove the project from the hoop. Now what we're going to do is just taking a pair of regular scissors, we're going to trim a quarter inch away from the outside line all the way around the whole project. Usually this eliminates most of the paper tape, so I wait to pull off the paper tape till after I'm done with this part. extra muscle to get through the zipper and then you can throw the rest of that away. Okay we want really nice crisp corners so we're going to trim the corners careful not to cut the stitching but getting really close. And then we're going to go back around and we're going to angle again again removing some of the bulk from those corners a little bit of paper tape there and the instructions show you exactly how to cut this okay now we get to start turning this zipper pouch and see what we've ended up with so you've got your opening in the lining and you're going to take the corners and push it through. Here's where you're going to want your turning tool to help you a little bit. I find it easiest to grab the corner and push the corner through first. This is kind of the trickiest part of the whole project, is turning it. So here's where you want to use your turning tool and actually turning the lining and getting a nice crisp corner is necessary to getting a crisp corner on the outside too. So push firmly, but not too firm. You don't want to push through those stitches. You can see we've got our zipper pouch inside out right now. You can see the lining. Isn't that amazing that the lining goes in without any seams showing. Okay, remember we have our little opening here and you have three different options there for closing that. You can either use your machine, a regular sewing machine, you can hand stitch it, or you can use some iron-on seam tape. Right now I'm just going to iron that and I'll sew it together later. I don't have my machine set up. Now we're going to turn it inside in and see our finished pouch. <gasps> Look how cute this is. Let's poke the corners. And last but not least, you want to use a nice hot iron. You can even use some starch here if you want a really crisp edge. This is just water. Ironing always makes the project look nice at the end. I'm going to close the zipper. I love how this quilting stands out on the solid. When I did it on a more patterned fabric, it kind of blends in. You can't see it as well. So it's nice to do it on a solid. Okay, let's take a look at our work. Look at the Molly zipper pouch. It is beautiful. 
We have a zipper that's been installed completely in the embroidery machine. It's completely lined with no seam showing. It's quilted, it has batting on both sides. We've been able to use some fun fabrics. Look how cute this is. I hope you're so proud of yourself. I hope you had fun doing your first machine embroidery project. Now remember, if you haven't got this design yet, check the link below, click through, and we will send you this right away, free. And you can try for yourself. Make sure to check us out on our website, metimedelivered.com. We have three really fun machine embroidery subscriptions where we deliver the projects right to your door with those amazing instructions that we use today. And if you like this tutorial, make sure you follow us on Facebook and YouTube and Pinterest and Instagram. In fact, we're on Pinterest TV. And if you follow us there, you'll be able to be notified whenever we do a live video. So have a great time with your Molly zipper pouch and go enjoy some well-deserved me time.